Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Yesterday we created three simple low poly characters and today I would like to show you how you can easily animate them. First we'll rig them and then we'll use the portal called Mixamo to get some free animations for our characters. So let's get started. Before you rig your character, it's very important to make sure that it has the correct topology. Here are four common ways of handling areas that bend. Some of them, as you see, bend slightly better than others. I generally go with the second and third approach. Okay, so I move to the front view and create a armature. Awesome. Now it's important um, to make sure that the origin point stays at the very bottom. So I'm going to the edit mode and then moving the whole bone up. But as you see, it is hiding inside the character and this is not very convenient. So what I'm going to do here, I'm clicking on this uh, little green guy icon. In the viewport display, you have this option in front. And this will make sure that the, that the bones are always in the front. So you are always able to see them. Now, the second thing is it's very good to see the wireframe of the character uh, when rigging because you know where the um, elbows, knees and this type of stuff is. So we enable the wireframe and we can start working. So I have this first bone here. This will be my root bone and root bone is like the bone of the whole character. So it's not affecting. So if we rotate it, the character will not bend, but rather the whole character will rotate. So for example, if you want to change the character's orientation for swimming, for example, that's the bone you will use for that. So I'm grabbing this small little ball over here and pressing E to extrude. And that will be my spine. Then I extrude once again forehead. Awesome. Now I'm grabbing this bone, duplicating it, rotating and putting it um, where the shoulder is. So what's important here is that the um, this ball is the place around which the bone will rotate. So you have to make sure um, that you are happy with the rotation place. So you don't want, for example, this to be here. It's much better to have it over here. Then this obviously goes to the elbow, this to the wrist, then that's my hand and for the fingers. And then I'm going to duplicate this bone, put it over here, move it a little bit and scale it down. That will be the bone responsible for moving thumb. Um, now, because the arm has slightly different rotation, I'm going to different views and just adjusting the rotation of the individual bones. Also, um, when you have elbows and knees, it's better to indicate the direction they should bend because this makes animating much easier later on. So I'm doing that over here. And the arm is ready. Then I'm going to duplicate the root bone, rotate it in the um, Y axis, go to front and again do that. Then I'm going just to make one long, long bone for the lower leg because the foot um, or maybe we could do that and then that. So yeah, because we don't really have the front of the foot, so it, there's no sense of um, going there. So we have that. Now we need to reparent some bones. So we want to make sure that, for example, shoulder moves together with this uh, with this bone, right? So if, if the character bends, this should keep the offset. So what we do, we select this bone, uh, sorry, this bone, first clear the parent, so Alt P, clear parent, then I'm selecting this and this, Control P, keep offset. And you see this small line appeared here. It might be pretty difficult to see it on the screen, but trust me, it's there. Oh, the same line as over here. So I'm going Alt P to clear parent, and then just to make sure everything is connected as should be, keep offset. And you see it connected it in this place. So 
I feel this is going to cause a little bit of problems, but we'll see in a moment. Then we go to this one and this one, control P, keep offset. Here's connected um, as I expected. And now we need to rename the bones. So for this one, I'm pressing F2 and renaming it to root. This will be spine, this will be head, and for the uh, bones on the right side, I'm going uh, to follow name of each of them with the letter R. Basically what this will make, once I symmetrize, so once I copy the one part to the other side, basically this will be correctly renamed to the left side. And then the different um, animation softwares and stuff, like for example Mixamo, will be able to identify the right side. So, upper arm R, lower arm R, hand R, fingers R, thumb R, and I really don't like where these dots go, but we'll see in a moment. Then this upper arm R, lower arm R, and the foot R. Now we press A to select all the bones, click right mouse button and click symmetrize. And this will basically, as I said, copy them to the right side, to the left side. And if I check the name of this one, for example, you see there is the letter L at the end. Now we go out of the edit mode. We select the character, then the bones and press Ctrl P and with automatic weights. This basically attached the model to the rig. Now to test if everything works, ex works as expected, I'm selecting the bones, pressing Ctrl tab to go to the post mode and I just rotate random bones to see if everything works as I expected. And I see there are a few problems. Not that bad as I thought, but we'll have to adjust some of the uh, weights. So what it means, basically, each bone is connected to certain vertices, which uh, and basically there is a connection with strength. So for example, um, you see this bone, if we go to the pose mode, affects those vertices over here strongly, but doesn't affect, for example, head. And all of that can be viewed when you select the character. So we need to go to object mode, select character, bones. Uh, you have to make sure that the focus is on the character and then you go to the weight paint. So you see if you select now different uh, bones, pressing shift and clicking on the bone, you can see which vertices are um, like assigned. So the redder the color, the stronger uh, the connection. So let me first disable the wireframe now. And we can check. So for hand looks all right. Here, not that bad. Thump is all right. Over here, I think we should have a little bit more. So this should go a little bit lower. So you have to make sure that over here you have this X selected. So if you paint it on this side, the other side will be automatically mirrored. So weight is how strong will be the um, con control of the bone, right? So we want to completely remove um, the weight decrease the radius and I'm going to paint over here where I see um, that there's the controlling force and I don't want it. So over here that will do it. Now sometimes you will have areas which will be very hard to get without touching other parts. Um, so for example let's say we would like to paint head because uh, the hand because our hand is not really controlled that much by this bone and it should be. So what we can do, we can go to edit mode, select those um, faces, go back to the white paint mode and then press this paint mask. And this then shows only the faces that you selected. So for example, if I now increase the force to something like that and paint over here, you see I'm not able to paint anywhere else, just what I have selected. So that's that. Then um, important thing over here, you can 
press shift and then when you click you can select and deselect additional faces so this is pretty pretty convenient okay so let's get that away this will do maybe a little bit stronger so a little bit more weight and paint over here so we will make sure that our elbow is actually controlling the elbow usually it looks much better i don't know what happened this time so and over here the shoulder is going definitely too far so i'm de decreasing the weight and removing the paint over here as i said if you have a look at the other side this all is mirrored so whatever we do is done on the other side too okay here looks pretty good just we want to make sure it doesn't touch hurt so what we do we go to the edit mode select whoops not this this hat we go to the weight paint select the face uh, face mask or paint mask and then paint over the head so awesome now we need to check our head whoops you see exactly if you press shift now you will select and deselect faces so you are not able to select bones you have to go out of this mode then select the face uh, not face the bone and then you can see if everything is as you expected so this looks all right this looks all right then for legs exactly and i don't want legs to control that much of the torso so i'm going to press tab select this loop and then again this and paint it to zero that will do it and again disable that check here looks all right and here looks all right for the side everything's all right okay so we have our rig now let's check if it works in mixamo so i'm going to the object mode by the way I don't know if I said that tip already, but if you press Ctrl tab, you can select the mode. So for example, you can very quickly go to the white paint mode. From this one, you can go to the object mode. Um, this is especially useful for um, the rig. So if you press now tab, uh, you will go between object mode and edit mode. If you press Ctrl tab, you see I'm going to the post mode automatically. So this is pretty convenient way of working with different modes. Now, we select those two so model and the rig we go to file export fbx and as you see i have over here selected limit to selected objects this way if you have more than those two objects uh, nothing else will be exported i export only the armature and the mesh then the scale is already set to one apply scaling fbx unit unit scale then I always check this apply transform. Uh, I've seen some people do not do it and get good results. I very often have problems without it. So I'm checking it and uh, never had any problems with it checked. So I recommend that also. And now I just click export FBX and we have our model exported. So now we go to the website mixamo.com. The link will be of course in the description. And now over here you see we have this upload character button. So I click on it, select character file and look for my elf rigged character, which is over here. Beautiful. And our character is over here and we see this first preview and it looks like everything is all right. So we click next. By the way, if you want to imp import models to Mixamo, you don't have to rig them. Um, you will be able to use auto rigger, so you will be able to drag and drop several elements and it will work too. Um, but very often the results are much worse than when you make the rig yourself and uh, fix the basically the, the weights. So now, for example, you see that the hands go inside the character a little bit. I don't like that, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, increase the character arm, arm space. And you see, suddenly it looks much, much better. Okay, I see that this um, area is not bending nicely when the character walks, and that's because we removed that, so this would be probably something to fix. 
Um, but besides that, I think everything looks really promising. So let's select uh, any other um, animation. So let's, for example, look for attack animation and we can test something like sword and shield attack. We see that the arms go through the face, but we could adjust that, but the animation is all right. So, or maybe this animation will not work for this character because the arms are a little bit too short because those are obviously not realistic proportions. But if I, you know, select the standing melee attack, you see everything works beautiful. So now let's have a look. How do I download it and use it in Unity? So let's go maybe with something slightly different like walk animation. That's pretty important um, because over here you see that you have this um, this this checkbox in place and this what this basically changes that the character is not moving so the um, position of the character is removed from the animation and this is um, I find much easier to work with in Unity. So I have that. You can tweak some settings um, if you like, so you can experiment with those. And then basically what you do, you simply click download. Then over here in format, you select FBX for Unity and on skin, you select without skin. So this will download only the animation without, um, without basically the um, model. So you press download and the animation is downloading. Over here, I have my small project. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first drag and drop here the elf character. So let me find it over here. And then also the animation I downloaded. Awesome. So what I'm going to do, I'm just, oops, I'm in the game window. So in the stand window, I drag and drop the elf character. I see the scale is a little bit too big, but let me fix that just here. Even more. You see that those characters are not really compatible because of the proportions. Uh, but I think we'll be able to demonstrate what we need over here. So here I have this character. And basically what I need to do on the armature, we want to add animator. We create new um, animation controller over here. And that's important that the uh, animator is on the armature, not on the um, parent object. That's very important. Otherwise it will not work. Over here, we drag and drop this controller. And now we could directly add the animation, but before we do that, we click on this uh, animation file and over here we see we have this animation. We want to check the loop time and loop pause. This will make sure that the character is looping properly. So this is very important. Also here you can trim the um, animation if you need and things like that. So this is pretty uh, convenient. If you have, yeah, now we have to apply the settings. And now what we do over here, I have the animator window. And what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to drag and drop this walking animation over here. And what will happen now when I start the game, the character should be walking in place. Let me go to the scene window and we see the animation is applied correctly. So everything looks exactly the way we want it to look. Let me just disable gizmos, maybe disable. Yay. In the next tutorial, we'll have a look at the inverse kinematics and animating um, the character manually inside Blender. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.